quarters. Not one person on this earth does that. Have you ever looked at an everyday object and wondered what is the purpose of that? Um, actually, yes. Yeah, sure, everybody has, I think. Yes, I feel like I've actually had that exact thought here. Well, today you won't have to wonder anymore because we're gonna be showing you 10 things that you probably see every day but maybe didn't know the purpose of. Love it. Oh, this is fun. Are you ready to learn some things? I uh, know. Let's do it. I like this. I am ready. First one up. Have you ever wondered what the tiny pocket in front of the jeans is for? Uh, as I understand, it used to be for cell phones, but um, cell phones are way bigger than this now. I think it's an extra pocket for like, I really don't know, glasses? It's to keep your tiny stuff safe. Coins? If you tuck a hundred dollar bill in here or change, it doesn't fall out when you bend over. I mean, it's a pocket, right? So you put your pocket watch in the pocket that is made specifically for your watch. You're correct. Oh, yay! Back during the 1800s, denim became a popular fabric for many working men. So yes. that tiny little pocket was added to the pants for them to hold their pocket watches. Oh, of course. Something very useful when yes. we're working down in the mines and the railroads, yep. Perfect, makes perfect sense. I see, I had heard that fact before. Pocket watches aren't really a thing anymore. We just have our phones and we have regular wrist watches that we wear. Not a useless pocket though, because it's now used for those things I mentioned earlier. I'll have to buy a pocket watch now. Next up, we have this. Coins. Quarters. So, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but have you seen that all quarters have these little edges all around them? Yes. Do you have any idea why they're there? Um, actually for them not to roll. Maybe so you could feel it and tell the difference between the coins. Scratch something? but like that sounds a little too cheesy. So you can run your pencil along it and then make someone go down their face and it's a fun trick. That's why I use it. To do something automated like a parking meter, they can tell if it's the real deal or it's a fake. Some people try to use those things they give you free to open a bathroom door where you spend quarters and maybe it helps them recognize that this is real money and that is a, a, a bathroom token. <laughs> Am I right? You are. Ah! I love it! See, I've been around the block. I'm 70. I, I've learned a couple things along the way. Back in the early days of America when the quarter was first released, many people would shave off the size to save extra metal to remelt it to make more coins. To help banks and others see if a quarter was tampered with, the U.S. Mint added the ridges to the side. Huh. Those tricky, tricky, tricky people. Is this like my tip? Do I get a key? I'll put it in my... Little pocket. <laughs> if you catch anyone shaving off uh, quarter bits, that's the struggle. A tennis shoe, a good old fashioned tennis shoe. So Converse sneakers are an American classic shoe, but do you know why there's two holes on the side panels of a lot of their sneakers? To let all the stinky air from your feet out. Other shoelaces. Letting your foot breathe while it's in your shoe. You can kind of like put a string to it to the other shoes so then they could stay together. Probably the vent, uh, sweaty sh tennis shoes. Converse was uh, first an athletic shoe because it was used a lot, you know, playing basketball and stuff. So I would assume for that reason, for breathability of athletes' feet. This allows air to filter a little bit so you're not so stinky. Correct. I correct. Converse was originally created as basketball shoes where the holes on the side had two purposes. The first was to help keep air circulating in the shoes. Yes. That, that needs to be true. And the second one is so that they lace through to get a tighter grip on your foot. Ain't nobody using Converse nowadays to put a shoelace through here and tightening it. Converse already tight enough. Okay, ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. Probably very familiar with ballpoint pens, but did you ever notice that the cap of these ballpoint pens has a tiny little hole right on top? Yes, this one, yeah. Do you know why it's there? That's to blow like a whistle, right? In case I need help, no? It's not just like letting your pen breathe as well. To help the airflow, I think. Do they get too hot and they need airflow? To make sure it doesn't dry out. These things do dry out, so I figure that it could be to kind of give it some air. I think it's so that the pen can pull out easier, because if there's no air vent in there, it, get, it like suctioned up and you 
probably can't pull the pen away? All good guesses, but incorrect. Okay. So many people believe that it's to help the pen not dry out, but it is actually also a safety feature. Really? So that if a child was to swallow the cap, they'd still be able to breathe. Oh my goodness, that's a horrid thought, isn't it? Roughly 100 people die in the U.S. each year from choking on pen lids, but this number used to be higher before more companies started implementing this hole. Hmm. Cool. I mean, it's sad, but interesting. Totally makes sense now, because of course, kids put everything in their mouth. I'm never going to use a pen again. That's a dangerous weapon. Next up. Oh, a bottle of wine. Wine bottles, they've been around for hundreds of years. But did you know that the bottle is designed for a particular reason? Why do you think the wine bottle is shaped the way it is, in particular that indentation on the bottom? Well, the indentation on the bottom, I think it's for the sediment. To get drunk. Is it like an aeration kind of thing? Does it need, I don't know. I'm gonna have to remember all of these when I have people over be like, you know. Would you like some wine? Did you know why then? <laughs> Only because I've seen people do it at my restaurant. It's for pouring. They could do it with a good grip to hold on to when you pour it at a restaurant at a table. Do this and do it that. I don't like doing it that way because it'll fall out of my freaking hands. No, it doesn't help its base. I'm not sure. I think it separates the sediment. As it ages, all that stuff goes to the bottom. It separates that so what, when you pour it, it's not so likely to come out into your drink. Good guess, but incorrect. No, I thought I was a connoisseur already. Wine bottles have an indentation on the bottom of the bottle, which helps it stand up straight, but initially its main purpose was to relieve some of the pressure the bottle goes through when inserting uh -huh. the cork to prevent it from bursting or breaking. Right, right, because it's already, you're creating a vacuum in there pretty much. There's no place, there's no displacement for the air. And then yeah. if you notice in champagne bottles, it's even larger or even deeper because yes. of the, because there's more pressure because of added carbonation. Right, because when you pop that, boom. I knew, because I did it wrong once and it hit my eye. Yeah, I guess with soda, they kind of have that little bottom at the bottom of the cans as well. Interesting. It's a shirt. Uh, ladies, blouse, okay. So when you buy clothes, it's often accompanied with a small plastic bag with a couple of buttons and a small piece of fabric, right? Yes. Do you know why the piece of fabric is there? Um, isn't it if you rip it, like a chunk of it gets off or something, you can bring this exact fabric to whatever store or fabric store that you want to go to. It's like, I need this color, and or this texture to fix the garment that I have at home. It's if something ever goes wrong, you can take this little mini piece and you can sew it together. If it rips, you can always just sew this right here. Either backing up the button or if you get the little hole. In case you get a tear in the material and you can try and patch it back or possibly if you ruin it, you can try and find the same material elsewhere. If you were to get a small hole or something and you really cared enough about it, you could probably, the old fashioned way, you could darn it. But people are not into that anymore. They're, they're like, buy it, use it, throw it out. So close, but incorrect. <laughs> Many assume the fabric is used to patch up any holes, but it's actually supposed to be used to test detergents so that you can see if anything will damage the new clothes. Oh, ain't nobody doing that. Not one person on this earth does that. Great idea. An iPhone? iPhone? I only know about the Android life. Most people who have used an iPhone are pretty familiar with their device, but have you ever noticed there's a small dot next to the back camera lens? Yeah, that little dot. Does it overheat and that gives it a little airflow? Is that for light sensitivity? Does it have something to do with focus? It's to keep the picture like steady and balanced. For flashing when you're in the dark so you can like actually see the picture. I thought it was a microphone. You're correct. Okay, yeah. I think it just makes sense that the mic is right next to the camera. The little dot next to the lens is a microphone to allow for sound when you're using back facing camera. Oh. So that's how they record all of our conversations. They are gajillionaires. Give us a bigger microphone, come on. Okay, good old spiral notebook. You probably always instinctually wrote between the side margins, right? Right. Well, do you know why we have those margin lines? It I mean, it doesn't do the exact measurement of like an eight by 10. It helps you not to write sloppy. It helps you write. If you um, go past the holes, then you write down and on the table. I assumed it's to take little notes that wouldn't mess up the rest of your, you know, the structure of your thing. I mean, that's what I used it for. I thought it was so that you could make notification, okay. 
correct this. To be honest, I kind of use it to keep my, um, when I write right here, to keep it clean. Because like, you know, especially when you think about it on a computer, it goes from a straight like line to a line as well. So I feel like it's the same thing, just on paper. Because we're used to following orders. It keeps our writing nice and straight and, you know, it makes us feel like we're, you know, following in our instructions. That is incorrect. Okay. What <laughs> is it? Sock it to me. Back in the day, many writings which were saved would get the edges nibbled out by rats. So to help preserve the written text, margins were put in. So if the paper was eaten, only the edges were gone and not the writings. That's so obscure. Could you imagine still having that problem? Oh man, the rats. We got to keep the line going, guys. The rats. Let me pray that no rats come by and try to eat my notebook. I'm already a wealth of useless information, but this, this is good. A beanie. Beanie is your classic piece of clothing, but do you know why beanies have pom-poms on the top? It's not just a fashion thing? This can't have a purpose. Now you're just making stuff up. I thought it was just for fashion, to be honest with you guys. Is it like minor protection for the head? It blocks your head from getting snow on it. If something flies on, it'll be the one to like keep your head safe. Well, for girls, they look cuter if you have a pom-pom in your head. And if you bump your head, you're gonna hit this before you hit hit your head. Maybe originally pom-pom beanies were used by like uh, people who explored or who would go off the trails. And if they were like colored brightly and they were like lost somewhere, they could find them by their pom-pom. When it's a really heavy blizzard, you can see someone. I'm trying to think of like either one type of way of like drifting off something like water or snow, or like I said, a visual aid to see someone from far away. You know, a tam, it's it's kind of like a like a hat. They're usually made out of knit like this. There's uh, has something to do with their with their colors or their family or something like that. All good guesses, but incorrect. But you're f***ing wrong. <laughs> Pom-poms can be traced back to Vikings who would use it on top of their heads to hold the fabric together, but then it was continued to be used by sailors who would wear them on top of their hats to help them not bump their heads on yes, the ship equipment. Yes, right, and hurt themselves, right. I understand this, though, because I was a sailor and on a ship, and likely as not, you're walking up, boom, you hit yourself and it's metal and it hurts. Many then switched the pom-pom for a button at the top of their hat, which looked like a bean and helped coin the term beanie. Hmm. And just then. I don't remember reading about that in uh, in history at all. I skipped the pom-pom <laughs> chapter. I never knew where that word came from. Thank you. I'm going to tell somebody when, as soon as I leave here. Finally, do you have any idea why donuts have holes in the middle? Oh my god, this looks so good. First thing first is food and I want to eat it. That That's why. Um, I feel like it's probably just easier to hold. For the O in donut. When you're doing mass baking, maybe it's easier somehow. Is it just to um save dough? They might have stuck them in the fryer with a stick or something like that. So they can grab it instead of grabbing the sides so they don't bite their fingers. They can have the hole to grab it. I always assumed so they would cook all the way through, like evenly, so it wasn't just like a doughy mess in the center. You got this one right. I would. It's about one of my favorite foods. So punching a hole in the middle was a simple way to make these fried cakes cook evenly, because when they would put it in the fryer, the edges would cook faster and burn, but the inside would stay doughy. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. And I got a free donut. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. And they used to be like, they used to be like really thin and like wide and now they're just all chunky and small. It's so funny. So finally, what is one thing you want to know the purpose of that we didn't get to today? Rent. A stuffed animal. Because I have like a million of them at home. Why do we get them? Why aglets are on shoelaces? Is it just to close up the seams of the fabric of the shoelace? We could probably do a quick Google search, but. It's fine. <laughs> this is fun. So I'm learning something new and I'm, I'm thinking about things I've never thought before. It sparks my imagination, my brain to, you know, think outside the box and, you know, try to figure stuff out, which I love figuring. I love figuring stuff out. Thanks for watching the episode of The Tents. Shout out to Hector Martinez. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss an episode. What do you want to know the purpose of? Let us know in the comments. Bye. Hey guys, we're Tiger Producer at FBE. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Tents. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. So hit that check mark, hit that bell so you're notified when we have new uploads. Bye guys.